Well, hello there, friends. And because we're on the internet as well as television, hello there, foes. It's good to see you and your rage. It's me, Kevin Pereira, and you've just stumbled into Attack of the Show presents The Loop. My guest today needs no introduction, but I'm actually gonna Google him anyways to give him the Wikipedia summation of his introduction, which is a thing that is being developed in real time, Adam. I'm sorry, spoiler, his name's Adam. <clears throat> Adam Sessler is an American video game journalist, television personality, and consultant. Well, that's professional and vague. He is best known as the former co-host of the video game review series X-Play and the editor-in-chief of G4's video game section, it's time to update the wiki. Ladies and gentlemen, Adam Sessler is here. Ah, hello. Hello. Um, okay, hold on. I've, I've, I've got to make a comment about that Wikipedia Please. entry. Oh, the best part is, this was a long time ago, but there's that section of Wikipedia where people who are writing the pages can have discussions. <laughs> and so one of the discussions, I think, was regarding my sexuality. Oh. Uh, whatever. But the is that what it said? Adam's yes. sexuality is best defined as yes, whatever. And they said he claims to be married, and we believe, and like more or less, we believe it's an Asian-looking woman, which is like they just couldn't like commit to Asian woman. You know, my my wife's Korean American. Um, and this is where it gets really good. <laughs> but she may just be a decoy, like Ava Braun. <laughs> what? And I'm like, decoy, I think they meant beard. And it's like, <laughs> you went right for Hitler's girlfriend. <laughs> like, there are so many other people that we could have, like, used as an, like, as an analog for that. Yeah, I like, there's no in-between. There's yeah. no margin. It's so, one of the bookends for you. Yeah, it, it's, it's like, what's, what's the theory? Like, how long something takes to invoke the Nazis? Yeah, it's, well, for you, yeah. it's, it's one sentence exactly. in a Wikipedia comment. <laughs> About my sexuality. Did you leap into there by any chance? Did you ever try to correct your own Wikipedia? No. Uh, I think I one time at a Comic-Con or a PAX panel asked someone else to change it because it had my middle name is something different. I can't remember what it was. Like, my middle name's Michael. And it wasn't, like, a bad name or anything sure. like that. It was just, like, how on earth did that become my middle name? Everything in your article, I think, has citations needed on it all over it. I yeah. think it's just one big speculative chunk of text. Yeah, I'm trying to be that person <laughs> in Wikipedia. <laughs> That's my goal. Well, we got to update it because it says the former co-host yep. for the video game review series X-Play and... Yeah, current. Wiki, get on it. This is Returning current. Returning, yeah. relaunched, a rewash. Did you even update your LinkedIn? Oh, LinkedIn. <laughs> <laughs> I think, like, I'm, I'm, I'm not even on Facebook. Yeah, but there is a Facebook page. My theory is... Is it one of those fan page kind of things? Where No, I think some, because I just never wanted to do Facebook, but I think at the old G4, someone on the web team actually created a Facebook page for me, and then maybe they lost their job, and it kind of got <laughs> Donnie brasco and it was stuck behind enemy lines. Yeah, the keys are locked somewhere in an encrypted and vault. Like, the funniest thing is there's all these people that got really angry at me that I wasn't accepting the friend request. I think it was like Michael Pactor. You know, the, 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 the gaming industry analyst, he's like, you never accept my friend request. I'm like, that's not me. That's not me. It's my picture. It's my name, but not me. Are you sure? It does show the Adam Sessler on Facebook is in a beard enthusiast community. <laughs> and I don't know if that's <laughs> facial or let's, relationship. Let's not check the Ava Braun enthusiast gonna, community yeah. or really we should just call that Facebook. Yeah. Um. <laughs> it is uh, an unexpected delight yeah. to be chatting with you right now. Not because chatting with you isn't delightful. Oh, I wouldn't expect anything but the last time you and I sat at a table. Yes. With microphones much like these. Yes. We were discussing G4 in a very different context. Very different context. Because you and I had a bit of a song and dance there over 10 years ago, 12 years ago, 15 years. I mean, yeah, I think something like that. Yeah. It was, it was, it was 2012. Yeah. Yeah. It's so been a long time ago. Yes. And in the rear view is all that rich history. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Out the windshield. I did not expect to see this. No, no. So, because this was not a, a, a gleam in the parent company's eye, <laughs> I guess is the best way to phrase it. The parent company has beady eyes that cannot gleam. Yeah. They are Vanta black. <laughs> they absorb light, <laughs> reflecting nothing. Um, no, I'm kidding. Love our corp. Love our corporate sponsors. In fact, uh, shout out uh, uh, shop.g4tv.com. Adam, did you know if you go there and use the promo code RATTY20, 
you can save 20% off your order before it expires. Oh, that's great. I was feeling a little chilly. I could use the shirt. Shop.g4tv.com. Don't worry, friends. If you missed it, there's going to be plenty more of them in this casual chat format. So I'm delighted <laughs> that you and I are sitting here again. Yes. It was unexpected. And when you got, was it a, a bat signal in the sky? Was it a phone call? Was it a Slack? Were you trying to log into Facebook and you realized there were some messages there saying, Adam, yeah. we need you. Please come back. Um, it was pretty much. Okay. So it was pandemic had started. I had left the company. I started with some other people. Uh, that was, I, I left that company before pandemic. Mm. pandemic hits and it's like wow okay my new direction map uh just got a lot smaller um yeah. and then i got a text from blair asking about my availability and i had heard some rumors i would say for the past year and a half and i was, I was like rumors. i think i know what that is i was hearing rumors for like five years oh i feel I, like uh, there was a start i was stop. hearing rumors that i put more substance in yeah i was hearing stuff oh yeah like five years ago and i'm like sure and I want a Shetland pony that like that, that like t sings me to sleep. Uh, but no, suddenly I'm like, okay, there, I think there's some substance to, to what's, what's, what's crossing my desk, I guess. So I was going to ask, where were you in your life that you were able to accept these rumors uh, and, and, and entertain them? Yeah. Um, right. Cause you said see, pandemic. I was unemployed and mm. stuck at home. <laughs> right where they wanted you. Even w ha ha having, you know, we just went through the launch and everything. Um, I imagine that if I was more gainfully employed, I might still have made the change. Um, uh, because it's, it's hard to work for a living. I think I think that's kind of, <laughs> you know, I, I much prefer this. Sure. And well, and in that interim, though, it's not like you stopped playing video games. Nope. It's not like you had nope. to put that face on for television and grab a controller and pretend you care about polygons. Yeah. Like that's kind of in your DNA. Yeah, no, no. And, and I was consulting. You know, the last time that we saw each other like this, I was consulting on Friday the 13th, the video game. They had just started their Kickstarter and I was trying to like drum up interest. So it was 2015. Uh, I believe it was October mm -hmm. because, you know, horror games. Right, Halloween. You know, all that kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, so I, I did that. I did some other consulting. You know, the tech company that I started was still very video game centric. You know, it was machine learning to help understand what people were talking about with video games. So it's always been there. It's all I know. It's like I, I, I can't make more friends in other areas because I'm, I, I'm just not that type of person. So I just have to lean on the existing ones. That's so, a good strategy. Yeah. That's good life yeah. advice for anyone. It, it, it's just, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I know you've been, you know, we've been riding the promo pony uh, well in advance yes. of launching this thing. Not a Shetland, though. Not a Shetland that will no. not sing you to sleep. No. Those are very expensive. It's yeah. a lot of very, very hyper training. But one day. One day. Dare to dream. Mm -hmm. In fact, you know what? Let's bring out the pony. Open up the stage doors. No, we, we've been doing a lot of promotion for it. What has been a common refrain for you? Um, what are the common questions you're getting? What is oh, the, um, how is it different? Mm. Uh, I like the one like, so are you excited? Like, I'm about to go, no. And like PR is right next to me going, ha ha. Yeah. I've been more <laughs> plussed about, uh, Black Friday deals. Yeah. I gotta be honest. I mean, all I know is I'm missing succession this week. And, uh, <laughs> you didn't miss uh, succession, did you? Did you well, actually no, miss it? No, I know. I mean, I could watch it on my laptop, but I no, like to, I like to sit on my couch. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That exactly. requires a sound bar. Um, so uh, I would say that the other one is what brought you back? Yeah. Like, you know, it, it's my, my, my feelings were not, I was not quiet about them. And so a lot of it was, you know, what, what was it? And it was, I love that question because it was like, yeah, because I was presented with an image of the station that it's like, that's what I want. And, you know, it was, it's, 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 it's young people. It's a diverse group of people, both in backgrounds and well, backgrounds, as I guess how you do diversity, but in the games they play, you know, how they grew up. I mean, it's just, it's that kind of thing. It looked like, this is what I know the gaming audience to be, or I know, you know, like the G4 audience to, 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 to actually be. And or at least the audience you want to attract and program yes, for. Right? That's true. Yeah. And it's like, cool. And like, I want to do this. This sounds really exciting. And I, I forgot, like, I like the creativity of coming up with bits of having an idea 
in my head where I can actually turn to someone and maybe it like becomes manifest. Mm -hmm. Whereas like during that interim period, I play a game, I could come up with three sketches, I could come up with a review, but it's like, where am I gonna put that? Right. It's yeah. like, you know, and then I tell it to my wife and she's like, ah, stop. <laughs> I, I don't care. And I love you, but find an outlet, <laughs> <Yeah>. please. <laughs> please do. <laughs> I can just imagine you covered in uh, like hot glue and pipe cleaners at a Hobby Lobby trying to, I gotta make this bit. <laughs> yeah. I need a rat puppet. <laughs> I need some googly eyes. We gotta figure this out. <laughs> oh my so God. what? I, I, look, I know you get this question a lot, uh -huh. but it is the top of the pops here. So what are you playing these days? What am I playing these days? Uh, uh, Halo Infinite, since they went and decided the week I'm down in LA, to actually like release the game early surprise uh, surprise yeah uh that um i i, I booted up skyrim with the anniversary and I, it was so stupid of me i, I started like i 36 I, it was like you know only a little bit of time between you know having been down here because i live up in san francisco yeah. so, so the viewers know I come down here i was going to go back for about three days and then come back down and during that time it's like about 36 hours where i have to be at the airport I'm like, I just want to see what Skyrim looks oh, like. Oh, no, Adam. And I, I started, and I'm like, oh, no, the feeling. The, I've had the feeling happen. I'm like, I could just maybe get to that first dragon. Okay, hold, hold that thought, if you will, because we, we have much Skyrim to talk now. Oh. Because I'm, I'm very torn on this game. I oh, think wow. the offices as well. So we're going to take a bit of a break. Okay. We're going to collect our thoughts on dragons and arrows to the knee. That's in the game. Arrows Is to it? the knee. I still got it. And when we come back, we got more with the legendary Adam Sessler. Is that fair? Yeah. Legends, yeah. I, I guess so. I mean. Oh, hello, friends. We are back with Don't You Call Him a Visionary. Uh, yeah. According to the wiki, former co-host for the video game review <laughs> series X-Play, Adam Sussler. <laughs> All right, so before the break, we were about to dive into Skyrim. Yes. You made the classic mistake of, I'll just give this a quick boot up. Yep. Let me just look at the title screen. Yep. Let me wake up on a wagon and see if I remember these textures. Yep. And what happened to you? Well, I was like, then I, you know, made the character. <laughs> and I was like, oh, you know what? I haven't played a Dark Elf. And, you know, what is nice is 10 years later, I now know things I didn't know when I did the review for it. Mm -hmm. I had early co, which was, can you actually play a stealth character this time? You, you could not in Oblivion because the game scaled like it scaled with you. And like you can't stealth kill Oblivion monsters. Like these just they're, they're kind of up on the sneaking thing. Sure. Like they're like, whoa, well, hello there. And then they bite your head off. Yeah. Uh, and I was like, oh, yeah, I can do like stealth magic. That sounds like fun. I haven't done that before. And then that feeling like, oh, hold on. I could do this. Oh, I bet that that dungeon is going to be really neat by when I play this character. And I start making plans. And you can't make plans when you have to be at SFO again right. in 36 hours. Yeah, there's an itinerary. <laughs> That's your plan. Yeah. You got to be on a plane. <laughs> yes, exactly. And here you are sneaking around from dungeon <laughs> to dungeon. I uh, took a, a, a bit of flack uh, for not, not getting that sensation. I didn't get that feeling. How from dare Skyrim. you not I know. force yourself to feel a way, Pereira? I, I have a taste and a preference, and it differs from someone. Oh, I, 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 I oh, guess oh. I'm a monster. Update the wiki. Oh, yeah. This isn't Sundance Channel with its Iconoclast series. <laughs> yeah, this is get in line, buddy. So I know that they, you know, they get a lot of flack for, for, for re-releasing, for updating, for putting it on new platforms. They wouldn't do that if it didn't sell. Yeah. If people didn't rally around it. Yeah. If I didn't get the tinglys then, do I hop in now? Or has, has gaming gone so far that the only way to get that, that rush again is pure nostalgia? God, that's really interesting. I don't, I can't imagine that it would suddenly grab you, maybe. I mean, look, I know that there's games I didn't enjoy because of the period of life mm. that I played them in. You know, like if I feel like a sense of urgency in the world around me, there's certain games that aren't like civilization is not fun to play. If you like are worried, like, yeah. you know, how are you going to make it? It's hard enough to navigate. Yeah, so. it's it's that's um, a fair point. So any game I play between like zero and 38, my anxious brooding period, I should probably go back and replay. I mean, there, there's some things. I mean, because there are games where I felt like I didn't like it. And a certain time, I'm like, oh, maybe I'll go ch check it out. I'm like, I do like it this time. Mm. Um, I wouldn't say that necessarily would happen with Skyrim, but it's, I mean, look, it's, it's older 
it makes me get very excited for Starfield, which is the the yeah. space tinge game that's coming from Todd Howard's team over at Bethesda. Um, and I, it's almost like I'm going out for that last dinner with that lady I used to date, and we're never going to talk to each other again. It, it kind of has that feeling. Yeah, you've well. already changed your status, but we'll 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 clink wine exactly. glasses one last time. Yeah, and then <laughs> off we go. So now uh, Starfield. Mm -hmm. All that we've seen is the logo, right? And the release date. <laughs> okay. Oh, great. So those two morsels. That's yeah, I mean, there, there, there was a trailer sometime earlier this year during that thing that could have been E3 that really wasn't. Right. Um, and so it, it, I believe it involved, it was like, you know, a pre-rendered, I think it was pre-rendered, if anything's pre-rendered anymore. Um, you know, thing of, I think a person in a spaceship going to space, which, you know, it, it, it said all of nothing about the game, and I think quite cleverly. Um, because if it was going to even try to hide the space aspect of it, that's probably a bad idea. Right. Uh, yeah, so we know nothing. Uh, I was actually talking to some people on X-Play, and I guess they've seen some materials where it's been described as Elder Scrolls in space. Uh, something I'm not tempted to read too much into. Like It's like they didn't say Fallout in space. Um, Elder Scrolls is more successful than Fallout. Uh, even though Fallout and Elder Scrolls themselves, I think, have very, very clear things in common with one another. Mm -hmm. um, so, I, I, though it would be funny if you had a sword in space, I think that'd be hysterical. I'm okay with I'm playing a space, space game and I'm still using, you know, a sword and bashing, you know, knights on the head. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Now, Microsoft makes the purchase. Mm -hmm. uh, turns out gamers have opinions. Dude, that's weird. And folks clamor. And I don't know if you've noticed this, but I, I got the sense that when, you know, Sony has great, great first party games, they have good studios, and it seems that that's celebrated all the time. Good on you, Sony, as a PS fanboy. I love everything you're releasing. Do you, you think, I think I, you know where I'm going oh, with this. Oh, I know where you're going. Your I, just, I, I can't wait for you to talk about it because I, I love to throw shade on this argument I, right now. I don't understand why Microsoft can't make even a hint or a whisper of a similar move without them being equated to all sorts of negative things yeah. which shall be unnamed. Why the dichotomy with Microsoft like buying Bethesda and bringing those games in house exclusive? Well, the part that I thought was so funny it was it was the the collective denial of all these Sony fanboys who were like, "Well, it'd be ridiculous to lose all that money on a uh, Sony players now with Microsoft." I mean, it was it was like, yeah, they've already uh, clearly they're <laughs> developing multi platform. They're going to release it on our it's console, like, right, guys? You 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 can take the plastic off the cushion. She's not going to come back to you. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> it's like I don't. It's like it was kind of really if you wanted to see how probably young men try to handle a breakup it was like so many yeah. fanboys trying to understand and like you know i love sony i love their games i cannot Same. stand their fan base whatsoever um i've been on the receiving end of their collective insanity too many times and so i just ruefully enjoyed every moment of that uh, <laughs> i'm still enjoying it right now i, can tell, I love that it. i love how much i mean it's just like it. trying to structure that argument like if i type it enough times it must be true it's like samuel beckett like a lot of his characters, especially in like his famous trilogy in the unnameable, the last of it, you know, the characters like it's kind of like they need to keep talking because if they don't, they cease to exist. Right. And <laughs> it's that, that that's how we start to see sort of like that that reaction to Bethesda. All right. So let's let's talk the 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 core, the meat uh, of, of the existence that is uh, your role with X play yes. these game reviews and these opinions of yours. Oh. How have they evolved? over time or devolved i, I don't want to be presumptuous yeah, I, how has the process changed is it all is it still the same today as it was oh 12 years no ago? no that has changed oh i mean so 2012 i leave i leave g4 uh <laughs> i got lefted let's put it that way <laughs> um then i go to revision three and so this is actually my first foray into the world of youtube and mm -hmm. mcns and stuff like that and while there are huge disadvantages, uh, it's just, you know, you're always feeding the beast and stuff like that. One of the advantages is we didn't have to do a three and a half minute review. We're not tied to a 22 and a half minute format. Uh, and it's like, oh, wow, we can talk about the game as long as we feel necessary. Uh, and so suddenly we were doing seven to eight minute reviews. And one of the things I really had loved doing back at G4 was less the video reviews, but I loved writing my own reviews that would go up on the website. 
Because there, I could go. You know, there's a, you kind of want to hit a minimum word count, but sure. you could, but you can go long, and I could wax. You can make poetic. that extra reference and have that exactly. creative flourish. And that that allowed me to do the thing I've always believed in, which is like looking at the game also in a larger like artistic or cultural context. Mm. Uh, and so that allows for certain types of digressions. Uh, you know, one of my favorite ones that I wrote was the Uncharted 2 review because I was, I was trying to like explain what that magic was in that game. I felt it reminded me of when I went to go see Raiders of the Lost Ark as a kid with my dad at Grauman's Chinese Theater. Like that sense of like amazement and wonder that such a thing was actually possible. Um, you know, that, that, that doesn't work in a three and a half minute video review because you've got to get to the meat and the potatoes. Um, right, I'm now like, we Adam, I'm sorry, that. I had to insert two ad breaks into you just explaining that. I'm oh, sorry. I, th I think you're right. Yeah. Go ahead. Okay, great. Uh, make sure you go to shop. I'm not going to do it right now. Continue, okay. Please. Oh, yeah, no. yeah. If, if, you, if you put in the code Adam talks too much, you don't get a discount. <laughs> All right. Um, you know what? Shop.g4tv.com. Use the promo code RATTY20. I don't know why yeah. I'm shouting it now. And, now. and now you can get me just maybe a, 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 a couple of sweatpants because I'm chilly down there. You know what? On that note, I'm going to actually go to commercial and we okay. come back. We'll talk about how the review process has changed. You, you got it. And uh, someone buy this man a sweatshirt. 20% off with Ratty 20. I'm a talking ad. Look at me. We'll be back. Hey, everybody. We are back with more from the host of G4 TV's X-Play and uh, future president of the network and future CEO of the Comcast Corporation. Adam Sessler, real wow. pleasure. Wow, that's, wow. That's, uh, uh, Remember us on your journey, us okay. little folk. you got it. Who wave the towel in support of you. I'm if, always... I, if I'm in Philadelphia, I'm supposed to have the cheesesteak, right? That's right. Yeah. Just and show and up I run the... up the stairs like the Rocky. Mm -hmm. Arms in the air, let the yeah. pigeons flank you, yeah. or doves, got or it. whatever they were in the got movie. It. And yeah, go and you right... have to break the bell more. Yes, you have to karate kick the bell. Oh! It's like a Street Fighter mini stage. Instead of beating up a Honda on the dock, you got to take out the Liberty Bell. Okay. Okay. That sounds good. I, I assume they have it out there for all to just kind of take a that's, swing at. That's exactly it's, what it's, it's, it's for. It's yeah. like It's actually a new TikTok challenge. Oh. You steal stuff from the, the restroom at the school and then you go and you punch the Liberty Bell. I, I, I can't wait for like these stories about the TikTok challenges and everyone freaking out. They're like, there's a new TikTok challenge. It's called shoot someone. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, it's, it's, it's and yeah. somehow video games will be blamed for it. Oh, of course. Oddly enough, yeah. which is maybe a, a topic for deeper in the episode. Uh, we were mid chat before yes. a commercial break about how the process has changed. And you were uh, saying that, you know, that you had this, uh, I won't say restrictive, but interesting televised format where you had a precious few minutes to yeah. make media about yep. a thing. Uh, you enjoyed the more blog version of that because you could take some time with it. And then we were able to do that more in video in form. In video, on digital, yeah. Um, and I, I really enjoyed that. You know, I'm very proud of a lot of the reviews I did during that era at, at Rep3. It was about two and a half years. Um, it, and then, you know, I go into the consulting stuff and start the tech company. And when I started back here... I knew things had changed in this process, yeah, but I'd always kept in touch with like PR people I knew within the industry. So I was kind of like aware of things from afar, but you know, games have changed significantly uh, in two big ways. Uh, most games are just much bigger. <laughs> and, like it takes more time to get through the game. And then there's also games now change over time. Yeah, that, you know, when I left, to, there was a disc. blow into the cartridge or yeah. polish cloth on the disc. Yeah. Because that was the game and that was it. Yeah, exactly. And <laughs> now, now day one, there's a massive patch, which might, which might be different from the review copy you got. And, rarely, but yeah, and uh, then, I'll, I'll touch on that. And then six months later, there might be a whole slew of end game content or DLC exactly. that suddenly opens up all or, sorts of possibilities. Or, 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 or something like Destiny 2, which is a much different animal than it was, you know, originally. And so that idea of... Uh, of we're going to give it our definitive take on the game here and we're never going to talk about it again. Uh, like, you, you can't really think that way anymore. To your comment about the day one patches, A, I don't mind day one patches. You know, I, I like to play the best version of the game right. possible. But where that does happen with early code, this isn't in all cases, they would also like you to play the day one patched version of the game if you're evaluating it. So while these games have gotten bigger, there are many instances where the period of time to play it in advance of its actual release or the embargo has Windows. gotten much smaller. Yeah. Uh, and that is th that to me is very unfortunate because even when reviewing a game, you're not playing a game like a normal person. 
Like normal people don't play 10 hours straight of a game three days in a row. Right. When you're suddenly doing even more, like it's 15 hours, three days in a row. It's like things like the repetitive nature of some of the activities are become so much more apparent than someone who's dipping into it, you know, two or three hours. Right. And it's one thing that I always have still have to become cognizant of that. Like I can only give my, what my experience is, but to kind of, you know, sometimes step into the shoes of what would a normal person react to the with, fetch with quest like or the resource gathering or just the, the general grind yeah. of any, of any play loop of any cycle yeah. might be extra grading when you, to yes. your point, have to barrel through it in four days instead of breaking up that or, experience. Or, or like, you know, someone's be like, if, if you're playing one of the new Dooms, you're like, well, I don't know. You just run around and shoot things all the time. Uh, you know, right. Suddenly well, something like that might yes. become a little bit more like, wow, it really is just kind of a, you run around and shoot things. But for everyone else, it's like, oh, I can't wait to get home and run around and shoot things for an hour. Well, how did you feel like Ratchet and Clank recently? Oh. Like I had no need to play that for the hours on end that I did. I wasn't reviewing yeah, it professionally. No, 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 but I mean. But I sank every tooth that's yes, left in my mouth into it, that it's, meal. That is, I would say like that and Forza Horizon 5 this year, like as different as they are in style, like they are so perfectly made, like polished and technical yeah. that the sheer like physical pleasure of holding that controller and doing those things on the screen is just like, yeah, it's, it's just, it's so good. Uh, yeah, and that that's something, that's a rarity, but it seems to be happening more commonly now mm -hmm. in game design because we're just, you know, we're, we're all the learnings of previous generations are always yeah. coming into play. Yeah, you mentioned that the, the time to review is becoming less and less, and obviously for your profession, yeah. that, that can be difficult. That's mm -hmm. a challenge. I'm yeah. sure it's strenuous and, and, and probably frustrating. Uh, for the consumer, I also hear, you know, like even Battlefield recently, there wasn't a ton leading up right to it. No. And then gamers seem to catch on, not just with, I mean, I'm just picking that because that's the last mm -hmm. comment I remember from a Shaq News yeah. discussion thread. But, you know, anytime there's a, hey, uh, game's coming out in 48 hours and we sure haven't seen a lot of reviews of this thing yep. or even previews, that's starting to signal to the audience that there might be something wrong with the game. Um, there, I, 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 I mean, even more than that is... Uh, Back when I actually was consulting, there's one thing I did try to indicate to a few people I consulted with, which is, uh, let, let's take Sony. Sony's pretty good about something, and that's a fairly consistent lead time on their embargoes. Typically, it's one week to 10 days um, ahead. They're able to do that for the most part because almost all of their games are single player, and so there's not like those X factors of servers or anything else like right. that, that, that that's there. Um but now that they've done that sort of 10 day lead, if they're able to do it. If they ever change to a two day lead on a particular game, man, if that isn't a strong indicator to me, who's used to that pattern going, I wonder what's going on here. Right. Uh, and there's other, there, there's other publishers where they're wildly inconsistent and you start to actually get a sense like, okay, I think you're, I mean, I, I like I don't know what the desire is. If it's like we only want you to play a little because maybe that'll hide some of the, the stuff, or sometimes the game just isn't ready, right? And that's still not a great thing. But uh, it yeah, could get ready. Maybe mm -hmm. that day one patch will solve it. And yeah. to your earlier point, you know, that's something for for folks to remember. Like maybe the developers really don't want you playing a version that they know isn't finished. That they've yeah. caught some obvious bugs on. And that's absolutely. I mean, developers can have a lot of say. In, in a lot of things. And I, I even know this from, you know, when, I, when I've talked to developers a lot, is it's kind of like when we do videos and stuff like that. We're going to see things in that no one else is going to see because we've shot it so many times. We, we've, you know, seen the process of it. Like, I can see bad lighting or, oh, I think the timing on that joke, you know, was a little bit off or I wish they had cut it like one frame earlier. Sure. Uh, game developers can see that. And, you know, one of those struggles, I think, always is, is getting, you know, the forest for the trees that, you know, you could always make something a little bit better. But at some point, you've just got to you, you got to push the baby bird out of the nest. Right. And if it Ship falls it. to its death, then Ship it. it does. No, yeah. most creative work is never uh, finished. It's just merely abandoned. Yeah. At some point, you have to, <laughs> you got to let it go. Yeah. You have to. Yeah. And, and it's, just, and sometimes they let it go at the right time. And sometimes uh, you might have needed some more homeschooling. Right. I, on, I want to point out, by the way, you may have heard a mystery voice. Is it still there? Vanessa? Mystery voice is right here. That's Vanessa Guerrero. Hi. Hi. I love Vanessa. Producer slash holder of the keys to Adam's Facebook. <laughs> oh, we found it. 
Oh, really? She can get you in. Oh, Vanessa's wow. Vanessa's got the codes. Yeah. I can um, get into the Facebook. Vanessa's here to keep me on track, but also Vanessa knows more about everything yes, than she does. anyone ever yes. has a right to, and I don't know how she does it. So, Vanessa, at any point, if you need to uh, throw a stapler at me or just interrupt, by all means, please do. Perfect. Uh, and uh, yeah, I don't have anything, no math up here, just a lot of video games and references Who to like, the epic build no. so. Let the pocket protector crew figure out the numbers. Hey, if Triceratops could function with the brain of a walnut. <laughs> Me too. They always say that it was the size of a walnut. <laughs> yeah. I think so, yeah, but yeah. it was a very efficient one, a very yeah. efficient walnut. There's a, um, I don't know if I've ever had this discussion with you. There's a, a, a symbiotic relationship between gaming press or a gaming entity, a yes. media empire, if you will, mm -hmm. even in the early stages, the walnut size stages, and, and, the, and the folks that make the product. Yeah. Well, I, I remember reading... Um, Actually, I remember experiencing old G4. There was a moment where there was discussion of like, hey, we have to look, we, we want to speak critically about something. And I don't recall if this was a video game product. But it's like, we want to be critical about something, but we got to remember like without that access, we can't speak. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? There's, there's, there's a hand, someone's getting yeah. fed and you want to be, you know, speak openly and honestly about something. But at the same time, if that hand says, oh, you, you bit my knuckle, you're not getting review yeah. code next time. That sounds like an impossible tightrope to walk, and you've been in this industry for I've, yeah. eons, and you've been very outspoken yeah. and very authentic. Have you felt that push and pull? Um, oh, yeah, and not because I deserve to mm. or that the game company was actually doing something. Uh, you know, there was a period of time where I think I wore too many hats. <laughs> you know, you, you were there. Remember Halo 3? Huh, I vaguely remember Halo 3. I feel like I saw the trailer, but then there was a... And then something happened. It was a commercial. Something happened. Uh, yeah, when we pulled out of the Halo 3 trailer, uh, uh, it was bad. <laughs> and let's, we, set, can we, let's set the table just a little bit yeah, more for, for the new viewers, because there's a whole new audience watching this new G4. This was a monumental moment. Yeah, we was, it was the first time as G4, mm -hmm. we were broadcasting a press conference in its entirety. It was Why? Microsoft, it was in Santa Monica. It was at the Santa Monica High School Stadium. I, I don't know why I remember that. Oh, that's because I will never forget that week for all of my life. Um, <laughs> I was like, I wasn't on site for it, but I was certainly in a G4 control room when it yeah. went down. Yeah. And uh, when they were broadcasting it, A, they started to cut to commercial. I think it was during the first Ma Mass Effect trailer. And mm. it's like, oh, that's not good. And at midnight, you have to do station identifications. If not, you get fined a few thousand dollars, I think by the FCC or, 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 or somebody. And that was going to happen during the Halo 3 trailer. And I was being asked to take the audience out to break. <laughs> So for those of you, Jeff Keighley will never make me forget it. Uh, <laughs> you can hear in the video, I'm like, so are you guys enjoying this? And that's me trying to buy time. I'm trying to remember, like think of how, can, this is your maybe whole, the trailer's about to end. Hold the door. Uh, yeah, is, this is exactly. Are you I'm enjoying holding, this <laughs> trailer? There's a commercial on the other side. And then I just, I couldn't do it. I, I, I put the mic down and the mic actually picked this up. If you crank it to 11, yeah. I found that out two days later. We're like, I am not doing this. I am not going to be the guy who has to take responsibility for doing the dumbest thing in the history of things. <laughs> um, <laughs> anyway, it was a disaster. The disaster actually gets worse that Friday. I'm not even going to relive that one. I just can't. I, I will have a panic attack. <laughs> okay, good, we don't, we don't but, want that. Anyway, but as a result of that... Uh, incident, I was like, can I take over the editorial and how we deal with these things? Uh, and it was just because I felt that we needed to save some face in the, in the light of the industry. I was able to repair everything with Microsoft by just saying like, hey, those people aren't there anymore. Uh, you know, those decisions won't be made. You'll be dealing with me. Uh, but at that point, I'm hosting the show. I am offering my opinion and I'm dealing with the game companies. Those three don't work in the best. Like, I wouldn't say I ever softened a critique, mm. but I sometimes got stressed that like this opinion is going to have these reverberations. Interesting. And I think at the end of the day, I may be pulled of my own punches a couple of times. Not that once again, not that the opinion changed, but maybe I didn't sharpen my teeth as much wet because it was just like, oh God, you know, because and that's the other thing, because everyone thinks I see a lot of these discussions about the corrupt press and stuff like that. And it's just if people could make 
if, if, especially people writing about games, if they were able to actually get money from the game companies, they wouldn't live like they have to on these meager salaries. Right. It's, it's absolutely asinine. But, uh, you know, when you're doing TV and you need to have content, especially TV, because we can't have more than 22 and a half minutes a day. We can't have less than it either. And so you're always like, I, we, we need more, we need more. And so, yeah, you don't really go, want to go out of your way and make sure that you close the door. And of course, there are some personalities out there that you know, have done very well for themselves by antagonizing the industry. Right, you know, that's true. Th in and out, and, and, but they and, might and they do fine, and they don't get games. I was going to say they're not going to have the yeah. exclusive access, yeah. and that's the road and, that they've and, decided. In a try. lot of business models, this yeah. one included, like getting that review up on embargo means views. End right. of story. Well, like you go a few days later, you have left so much on the table. You've left money on the table, and mm -hmm. that's unavoidable. Uh, in honor of that Halo trailer moment, ah, I yes. have to take us to break. Okay. I'd love for you to delay me or try to stop me from doing that. If you Are you enjoying it. this? Yes. Are you enjoying Here, this, friends? Uh, hold, hold the oh, door. No. Oh, no, yeah. Okay, he's actually very good at this. We're going to take a break when we come back more with Adam Sessler. <laughs> don't go. I will not be no, the one don't go. who takes us to Yes, indeedy. Hello there, friends. Welcome back to Attack of the Show Presents The Loop. My guest today is Dr. Adam Sessler. Doctor. We are knee deep. I can change it. No, no, no. I mean, I, I, originally I was like, like last break, I was the president you of Comcast. You were legendary president of Comcast. So is this a PhD doctor or is this a I'm going to cut you open doctor? Dealer's it's choice. It's a mail order thing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The yeah. certificate is in the mail. You can. Okay. You can okay. Up, yeah. But, uh, congratulations. Yeah. I, I graduated from the University of Lombada. <laughs> And got my doctorate in um, doctoring. We are, um, spoiler friends, uh, this, this show normally live today, this is pre-recorded. Yes. And, and so uh, if you're chatting along, I hate to, to burst that bubble, but um, I guess we could do some generic chat interaction real quick. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. You guys are awesome. Oh, do you see that comment, Adam? Uh, wow. I love my fans. <laughs> They're the best. Wow. F's in chat. Thank Ooh, you all. Ooh, chat's going crazy. They're going, it's scrolling Whoa! so fast. The reason I mentioned we're pre-tape is A, I'm unprofessional and uh, I'd like shattering the fourth wall. Yeah. Kool-Aid. But B, for the folks that are watching this, we are on the precipice of a Thanksgiving mm -hmm. and a Black Friday. Exactly. Two great tastes that go great together, apparently. I, I, I guess so, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and then, well, yeah, and I believe this is airing on a Wednesday, and I just don't want to give anybody the perception that I like them so much that I will fly <laughs> home the Wednesday of Thanksgiving week. Sure, so, yeah. sure. Okay, so now the table is set. You have a rich tradition that is the Thanksgiving game. Yes, what is this year's Thanksgiving game? You know, or for those who don't know, maybe we take a yeah, step back. Yeah, let me talk about what, what my Thanksgiving game is. Is that you know, usually all the major games come out by Thanksgiving. Uh, there's an exception this year with Halo Infinite, I guess, campaign. Mm -hmm. uh, that's coming out the 7th or the 9th. I don't know. Whenever someone, when, when, whenever our wonderful editorial guy, who isn't me, Danny Pena, hands me a code. Right. Uh, <laughs> so um, Thanksgiving game was always, okay, I finally got some time off from, it was the second busiest time of the year, the other being E3. And it's the game I, by choice, decide to play over the long weekend. Uh, and I, I really like, I think one time, I think it was Metal Gear Solid 2. Mm. Uh, Solid choice. Yeah. Cause it's like, I, I fiddled around with it for a while, but I didn't have that time to really, that's a game you got to sit back, relax, and just kind of let the weirdness flow over you. Uh, I, I believe one year there was a Halo <laughs> that, that, that did that. This year, um, it's tricky. I want to go back to Skyrim. Okay. I absolutely adore Forza Horizon 5. I didn't review that one. That one was done by Frost. It, excellent, excellent review. Uh, I'm just, I've never been a racing car guy, but this one seems to have gotten its hooks in me. Same. Um, also, I'm trying to play through Dark Souls 3. But this has been going on for months. I just keep on like dipping into it during a downtime. I, it's almost like I'm using it as training for Elden Ring uh, because I have never ever reviewed uh, a Soulsborne. Yeah. I've played them. I don't think I've ever finished. I may have finished Sekiro. Uh, Do you enjoy the process of playing those games? Because I, I, again, I really like Bloodborne. Really? Yeah. That one. Yes. I mean, it, it's one of those. I was resistant to them at first. I do think they're. I, I, I think they're 
meanly inaccessible. I cannot stand the fans that they have. Like these are like really some of the most rotten people out there. Like the people who define their self-worth is I free jerk souls too. And twice. And it's not that hard. You all suck people. It's like, wow. Yeah. You just say unscrewable. And they manage to sound like like that. Tattoo it on your chest. They manage to sound like that even in text. Like in the YouTube comments, it's just ASCII dripping out Uh, all over ah, the comment section. Yeah. uh, (laughs) Oh, so like I never wanted kind of to to support their demented, you know, outlook of the world. Um, But they are really cool games. (laughs) One of the key things. I just wish I could see chat right now. I know we just established that this is a pre record, but I'm sure it's. Oh. I Chef's mean, kiss. it's like, you know, it's, it's like Dark Souls fans are the Naruto fans oh, of the God. modern oh, era. No. They're just, they're there for me no. to poke with a stick. Okay. And, you know, the older I get, their insults are just meaningless. They're like, you're just old. I'm like, yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> That's just a lack of respect for experience. Yeah, That's exactly. what you're showing, actually. Um, so I, I like them. I, I, I love the art in those games. Yeah. Just like the creature design and all that stuff. And you know, one of my most favorite games ever is Ghosts and Goblins. And I always loved that game because every level was designed so differently than the one before it that that became the reward of the game is, ooh, what am I gonna see next? Right. Uh, anyway, I'm completely stuck on this boss in Dark Souls 3. Uh, and it's just like one of these days, I just want to get past it. So this might be a chunk of your Thanksgiving day. Yeah. Well, well, be it to my wife. Cause she knows that I'm playing the souls game oh, okay. because it's like, wow, didn't know you could string those expletives <laughs> together in such a clever way. That sounds scary. Or cause yeah. she's a lawyer and during COVID she's also like on with other lawyers or maybe with a judge. Yeah. You know, this Honey, whack and frazz and dazz and do, you know, the zoom noise suppression, uh, can't filter out all the, those words it, it, it also it happened when uh, we were we were reviewing back for blood i was oh, playing with other people on x play and i kept on referring to one of the enemies as mr hansy <laughs> he's got a really big hand <laughs> and i guess she was deposing somebody no <laughs> mr hansy it's like mr hansy stop it mr hansy and you know they have no context for this sure. and they're like wow nice household you got there <laughs> All the context they need. Yep. <laughs> oh God. Okay. And then so Black Friday is upon us as well, and for God. some that is a, a, a you know a rich tradition of uh, s- uh, sleep deprivation and stepping on necks yeah, to save a couple on dollars and, on a Blu-ray. And like really exporting images of America that only yeah. can warm the cockles of the rest of the planet. <laughs> Especially the ones where like, wow, what they're killing each other over a cabbage patch, kid. And I would like to feed my child. Mm, dare uh, to dream. Yeah. Now, uh, I still see uh, Slick Deals spreadsheets with uh, shout outs to the, the, the big box retailers are going to drop the price of something by $10 to try to get you in, which, you know, $10, a steep drop. Yeah. But in the day and age of digital delivery and uh, plenty of developers and publishers offering coupon codes directly and whatnot, like does, does Black Friday still have a, no. a big meaning? No. Well, also, you need to have a supply chain that isn't like, you know, my colon down at the, at the San Pedro docks here. <laughs> Uh, what? <laughs> we if we, we can't get live, some Metamucil sponsorship or, in, if in this If we were house? live, I would ask Discord for a Photoshop of that uh, right now. <laughs> but uh, no, unfortunately. So not. yeah, it's gonna be still gonna be very, very, very hard to get a new console. Yeah. Uh, it's very, very easy to get a game because it's you know it's digital, and obviously during COVID, uh, because so many people play games. I mean, the industry wasn't hurting right. in terms of getting games out was hard, but in terms of games being available, but I would say that the, you know, the, the use of digital, excuse me, downloads just accelerated faster than anyone expected because like, did you want to risk your life to go into a GameStop? Right. I, I mean, people were long predicting the shift to digital, yeah. obviously. And there were many charts and many graphs from publishers, developers, and retailers mm-hmm. with that chart. And you just dialed it up. You just yeah. you sped it up like five years because of the pandemic. Yeah, and which which is fine. I, I I'm not, you know, I'm I'm not a huge fan of like game packaging. I don't think it's great for the environment. I don't know how much we are going to change the world if we get rid of that. But I had to get rid of all of my game packaging when I moved back to San Francisco from Los Angeles because uh, L.A. apartments. I'm, I'm sorry, L.A. apartments are big. San Francisco apartments are kind of like Manhattan in Tokyo. Yeah, uh, and like I didn't have the space. 
Uh, so I had to throw those out and put them into binders. Um, also, I just I don't even like special editions of games. Like really? I, it's it's like the, the games aren't attractive. It's like the same problem that really plagues horror books in in sci fi novels. It's like I probably read more of them if they didn't look so ungainly when you're holding them in your hands and you're out in public. Right. Uh, and, and just game packaging is just like uh, it's, just, it's ugly. But so are we talking like you know throughout your career amassing physical copies, limited edition yeah. things, special editions, you know. Uh, it, press you know unique collectibles and what i have a handful of those there's you, a few you, neat things i've received over my years you kept some of those yeah i have the scarbo fair gun from bayonetta that's in like a, a glass case they, they made only a limited number of those oh, and it's just cool. so cool and like i got this nine-year-old godson who like doesn't really understand why a grown person that complains about his back all the time has access to all of these cool things that he <laughs> right. can only dream of. So, <laughs> so, but the, the process of paring the other stuff down, was that difficult or it emotional about, or surprising? No, getting you? rid of the packaging. I had to go through like half a bottle of makers <laughs> with my wife going like, you're doing great, baby. You're doing great. Yeah. I mean, I was probably the closest I'll ever get to giving birth. Uh, you know, that kind of like meaningless encouragement uh, <laughs> and like some degree of opioids as well. <laughs> sure. Uh, it, it's, uh, it was, it was tough, but once it was over, it's like, I didn't miss any of that stuff. Yeah. You know, look, 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 here's, here, here's another thing. I don't hold, hold on to my old consoles. Really? Yeah, there's, I don't have enough space. Do you donate? Do you trade in? I usually you, give it to like some of my friends okay. that like you know don't like aren't like as into gaming or you know that you know they don't have the money or something like that. Yeah, I it's you know that that way like I can talk to them about things in my life. <laughs> it's kind of essential. <laughs> They're like now I can be like, hey, you play that Spider Man game now that I gave you that you know PlayStation Four, and then yeah, it's just funny. I don't know, and we've never had a conversation that would lead me this way. I've never seen photos of your of a man cave or a gaming den or whatever your setup is. But for some reason, I imagine you with like a tasteful LED lighting strip, backlighting, some sort of fiberglass structure with your collectibles and your years of game collections. And your I, mean, I, have, I have a bookcase that's filled with comic books, like, like hardbound collected editions. I think those are good. I have a really big uh, uh, Captain Quark model I got from Insomniac, the Scarborough oh, Affair. Cool. Yeah. But yeah, I don't, I just, I, I, I don't fetishize that stuff. Uh, I know every, every, everyone thinks that I look like other people's desks, <laughs> but, but yeah, uh, uh, yeah I, I, I just, it. I, I, I kind of like the clean lines in a nice sofa. So love it. I, I like appeasing our corporate overlords. Oh yeah. And I love ad breaks. Do they need a, a, a back rub or something oh, like we're that? We're going to give them one right now oh, uh, in the yeah. form of a commercial break. When we come back, we actually have your questions for Adam Sessler plus a fun X-Play related game. You don't want to miss it. Ooh, or maybe you do. I don't know. I'm not you. You live your life. But we'll be back after this. I'm into games. Oh, righty, friends. Hi, it's me, Kevin Pereira. Unimportant at best, my guest today is uh, X Plays host, gaming journalist, oh, iconic, important. legendary visionary, Dr. Adam Sessler. Oh, if I could be a doctor. The president of Comcast. The I'm just president of Comcast. All together yeah, now. and and the United Nations. That's right. We're going to yeah. have to go 17 by 9 just to fit your lower third on the screen. Yeah. Just have to I, add well, some well, extra real Xavier estate. is really the fault right, of that. Yeah. I'm He's like, got, I want more names. <laughs> He's got such a title. Yeah. It is, and, and now King has been added to yeah. it, which I'm just like, okay, now he's royal. He's an endless scroll, and yeah, we love him for it. Is. Now, Adam, we are not live at the moment, unfortunately, because, again, the engagement. We've, we have passed away. <laughs> no. Yeah, we no, passed no, on. This broadcast is pre-taped, but we didn't let that get in the way of hearing from the amazing fan base that you have. Ah. We asked the G4TV audience if they had any questions for you. Turns out they did, so it's time for a brand new segment. Because we have never done this before. Oh, so it's like a world record. Literally, yes. <laughs> You're a record-breaking guest, Yo, Adam. Oh, that's amazing. Uh, it's something we call chat has questions. We have answers. Let's answer them. That's an amazing segment name. Wait, the, but there's the graphic. When you see it, it'll be there. Oh, you better it'll be believe. Sweet. It'll be pretty sweet. And now a massive reaction to that amazing graphic. Whoa! <laughs> we outdid ourselves this time, didn't we? Wow, there's mm. like 10 to 15 minutes put into that. 
<laughs> Literally uh, dozens of minutes oh, were put into that. Wow, I got to try that sometime. All right, so chat had some questions. We have answers. We're going to answer them right now. Okay. Adam Sessler, in no particular order. Here come your questions, good sir. All right. uh, let's fire them up. And when you see them, you're going to know that someone from chat asked this of you. Really? And it's going to be filtered through me and these screens. And once they're up. What a revolutionary format. Hey, there we go. Old redacted username asks, hey, Adam, how do you feel about VR and the implications of large scale creative and social spaces such as VR chat Neos? VR and Rec Room. Oh, I think there's supposed to be a comma there. So VR Chat, mm -hmm. Neos, which I'm not familiar with. Um, maybe this person works for Neos, Neos, and this great, is great, free great, advertising. Great, 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 possible. great move to, to put yourself there. But, yeah, VR and VR spaces, let's say. Camino spaces. Have you spent much time in them? No. Um, and it's not like I'm against VR. I'm actually in a VR game. Uh, yeah. Uh, it, it came from Twisted Pixel. I'm blanking on the name because I, I did the VO for it a long time ago. Uh, I'm going to have to remember later. That's okay. Chat, yeah. chat will correct us. right now. Chat yeah. is going to correct us. Don't worry about it. We'll get there. Um, but okay, so let's, well, let's maybe, uh, we'll have a broader VR conversation, but also the VR space thing. Have you done a VR chat or done any rec room or anything No, like I, I, I haven't done any okay. of that. I'm not really, I think the biggest issue with VR still is they need to make it more accessible to more people, not just with cost. Mm. But like, I don't have the space. Like, you know, we were talking about earlier that I had to get rid of the boxes for my games. Right. And it's kind of like, you know, VR, as it was originally conceived, I think imagined that its early adopters would all be living in the suburbs mm -hmm. and that they had and, and didn't drive. So they had space in their garage. Um, I don't have that. I also very strongly believe that VR is going to become more wi widely accepted, not on the backs of games this time. I think it's it's still very hard to sort of program and really maximize something in VR that 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 works and feels essential. I think sports are going to be the biggest thing for VR. Oh, which um, because imagine like pay a few hundred dollars and you can sell an infinite number of fifty yard line tickets to the Super Bowl. Right. Or like I love boxing. Uh, as much as I love being back at G4, I do not think it's ever going to allow me to buy the front row ticket to a prize fighter match. Mm. And I love boxing. But you know, hold on, I'll pay a few hundred dollars so I can at least be that close to the sweat flying off of someone's right, face you want it hitting when they get hit. The lens. Yeah. You want to have to wipe it and off. And something like that. I, I, I really see that being the big push. Um, in terms of the stuff like the chat, uh, being in kind of a virtual space with other people, I think it's cool, though I don't think it's essential. I don't think it solves a problem problem that exists but it might create more problems <laughs> wow. I, I, it, it's look like the harassment thing is real yeah and i just think sometimes we get seduced well this is just a very silicon valley thing it's like <sighs> Most of them are blithering idiots down there, I think. <laughs> you know, you if you're paying attention to the Theranos trial yeah. and everything, you're kind of like, how did this happen? It's like everyone is just it's just this, this kind of like just echo chamber. Uh, and I think a lot of unfortunately, a lot of VR and the whole conversation around metaverse mm -hmm. is just this kind of thing where like, you know, they're like, I think the idiots out there want this idiotic thing that we're devising. Like, that's really how I do think people think out there. And when, once again, it's just I don't think anyone's clamoring for VR because there's not that thing lacking in their lives that 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 VR solves. Yeah. I, you know, I. Oh, yes. Vanessa. I just looked it up. Is that video game Wilson's Heart? Adam? Yes. Wilson's Heart. Yes. That's Fantastic. Additionally, there is also a Creed VR boxing game that is amazing and a fantastic workout. And also, you just made me realize that I'm dressed like the Theranos lady. <laughs> no, you're not. Oh, 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 you are. Yeah, you are. Yeah. You know what? Um, this is very well funded. Pretend though. that I'm Walgreens and you can almost bankrupt me. Write a Fantastic. big check. Yeah. We're going to be you a lie. Uh, yeah. blood on the floor behind the stage. Because exactly. apparently that's something that happened in there. Weird Keurig testing machines that would just kind of spin it around. Which, and well, I just love they, they spun it and then they just went over to the drugstore and did the actual, did the actual uh, test. 
but no so so there i mean obviously okay the creed boxing experience is one that sticks out yeah. for vanessa half-life alex for me yeah. was sort of like wow this is amazing and then i hung up my headset yep exactly which statistically overwhelmingly the majority of vr headsets get used within the first like 72 hours it's like the first week of ownership yep. and then they all get hung out because it just it requires too much of the user yeah you know, and I, I, I tip my hat to people that are committed to VR. I'm yeah. not going to ever disabuse someone of enjoying something they're doing, uh, except for fascism. Sure. Uh, that I will disabuse you of. Um, but it's just, yeah, I just think, I think we are so far out from white acceptance because something essential hasn't been done with it. And I think sports are the right avenue for that. Mm. I've, uh, yeah, the number of times I've been excited, I've, I've owned every Oculi. <laughs> and, and vibe that you can and uh -huh. every time one comes around i am excited by the new bells and whistles the uh -huh. new guardian the video pass through the whatever it is and i get i get i do usually get two of them and try to entice the wife to get into that <laughs> vr community as well and we'll play a couple hands of poker or maybe we'll do some rec room or a little vr chat inevitably she will be harassed in a in a vr space yep i will do my best to diffuse it or make a portal yep. and warp us to another area yeah and then the next night we're back to streaming netflix yeah, or I mean, holding controllers so much about tech in the tech industry and not the games industry is predicated either on like human beings aren't inherently evil or they're not i don't even think human beings are evil they're just awful um or like kind of the zuckerberg approach which is more like you know somehow not having any moral values whatsoever is like, you know, one's highest calling. And so you don't pass judgment. Well, their, their mission as well, their stated mission. And if you ask any Facebook employee or Meta employee now. Oh, it's you, not Meta. No, it's not. It's not it's, it sucks. I actually have a, a good the friend that's named Meta. And so when the, the uh, <laughs> then suddenly, you know, they make that change. And I saw her name and I'm like, oh, boy. <laughs> That they sucks. got permission. Yeah. Now, th their stated mission and goal is to connect everyone. They're on a mission to connect everyone. But it seems like in that pursuit, which yeah. righteous or not, in that pursuit, they didn't stop and think, should everyone be connected? Yeah. It's, and it's, and it's, what it's, tools and moderation and what and stop yeah. gaps need to be put in place it's, so that when the wrong dot gets connected to everyone else, how can you mitigate the damage yeah, exactly. from that? No, it's just, and you know what? There's one other person that, you know, was kind of fascinated by connection and it was Kojima and we got Death Stranding out of it. Mm. I would really prefer Death Stranding to January 6th. That's that's, that, that's kind of yeah. I, I mean, it's, I don't think that's even a value. Judgment. And we did it. If if at home you had January sixth, the metaverse and VR chat on your bingo card, lucky you. Yeah. Check the tally when we come back from the break. We'll see if your bingo is valid, and we'll have more questions B for Adam. I N G O. We got through one, and we can't license that. Adam, that's not in our library. That's not. It's definitely not a. What's his name? Does bingo belong to the people? I think it does. does it, is it Creative Commons? Welcome back to Attack of the Show presents The Loop. I'm Kevin Pereira. My guest today is Adam Sessler, and chat has questions. We have answers, and we're going to continue on with this one. And, and maybe, maybe I won't ask 40 follow-ups. Okay, we can get okay. through more of the but, chat uh, questions. Okay. <laughs> they need their day in the sun. No, well, let's the get to it right now. Yes, shine the bright light that is the beacon of questioning from our dear chatters. Our next question is from the actual devil. Surprise, oh, surprise. Big fan. Better than all those fake devils. From the Dark Souls community. Oh. If you were trapped on an island with all the other G4 hosts with no food, who's getting eaten first? Hmm. I'm right I mean, here, Adam. I mean, well, no, I was I'm thinking right Kasim. Here. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's that's just, fair. It's just like... <sighs> yeah, B-Dave is like, there's more of him. Mm -hmm. he's, he's our tallest. Yep. But I, th I think we could catch Kasim pretty easily and subdue him. That's, that's my sense. He's like Kobe beef. He, he, he seems very relaxed. He eats very well. He's easy to catch. Sure. His marbling must be fantastic. Yeah, you, 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 you might be on to something there. Is, do we know if anyone rubs his belly? 
I know he does constantly. Oh, well, then, yeah. Then, when then, he then, comes to my desk, he kicks so. a foot up on it and then just starts massaging his stomach while he asks oh, me how okay. my morning's then, going. Then you know what? And yeah, doesn't listen then to the definitely answer. Cassim. Yeah. I, I don't. How do you catch a Cassim? Is it like a, a ruler on a cardboard box? Oh, I like think you a, just lay out the spikes. <laughs> That's it. And then you chase him and he'll like step on them and yeah. He's okay. like, ah, I can't move. Like, that's the point. Nah, I can't move, guys. Yeah. <laughs> uh, guys. Nah, I can't. I can't cast him today. No <laughs> register. Uh, all right. There you go. Cast him. Sorry, buddy. Love you. But apparently yeah. your dinner first. All right. Next question from our community. <laughs> Mega plushie asks, knife or bat? Knife. Yeah. I, I'm, look, I, I appreciate I went, the, I, I, I went to the kind of high school where like these were like questions that were asked. And by the teachers. Well, they were issuing you yeah. your weapons when you Knife checked in the class. Knife or bath, yeah. cake or death. Um, <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, I, the guys who tried to like charge on people with bats at school. This is El Cerrito High School. Uh, oh, I know El Rich Cerrito. Unified uh, School District. Yeah, if you know El Cerrito, it was not for the good things. <laughs> like, like Skyline High School in Oakland, where like Tom Hanks graduated from. Like, they're like, we will not play you in football because we sucked at football. Yeah. But we were really good for the post game fight. We'd get you in the bleachers. Yeah, that's exactly. where we win the game. Is the parking lot. You're not um, getting to your Miata. Yeah, when I saw fights with bats, it's like those things. Like, they're, they're, they always came like charging in, like kind of like really telegraphing, like something's gonna happen. Happen. Yeah. Knife things are kind of like you just like kind of walk down the hall, stick it in, and keep going. So, and I think that's more my style. <laughs> El Cerrito represent. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They made me the man I am today. I like the, just the question of knife or bat could have uh, you know warranted two or three follow ups, but for you it was just a second of consideration yeah, and knife. directly to knife. Yeah, okay, knife. there we go. Uh, next question from our chat. We've got. Minty says, Adam, given your tenure in the games industry, does the Activision, Activision situation today make you feel like there has been any progress in the games industry at all for equality or has nothing changed? Uh, now, yes. a disclaimer before we answer this, uh, this is a pre-tape. Yeah. And history is happening. As of now, while we're discussing. Bobby Kotick is still at Activision. Right. I have every hope and I have actual professional uh Thoughts that he will not be here even by the end of this week mm. uh, that that we're taping. I, I I think that I think the hole has gotten too deep. Uh, even though the board expressed their support, if you go back and you read the, I board's was just going to ask you about that yeah. because okay, we are, we are taping this about a day after the the big article hit. Yeah. In the um, Wall Street Journal. Wall Street Journal Absolutely claiming that Bobby was a good reporting. Wow. Yeah. That's quite the piece. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and we're, we're a day later. And, and the board, as you referenced, yeah. released a statement supposedly supporting Bobby. I mean, Bobby. it was. Now, I, if you go back, yes, it's a statement in support. It, it makes absolutely no case where they say Bobby Kotick is essential mm. to stay at the helm of Activision and writing the ship. It says something that's so pro forma, like you can imagine an old, like, like, like an AI, you know, on a Commodore 64 would have produced something like this. And so I think it's, you know, it was kind of to assuage the markets or I would even wonder to test the markets to see if board, like, you know, the, the share price in Activision dropped. Now, right. the question is, did it drop because Kotick might leave or because Kotick is there? So you I think, think that, 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 that release potentially could be A-B testing the market's reaction yeah. to yeah. I, supporting just him because or Just because the board him. said that, and, w and one thing that we do know is that uh, Kotick has stacked the board with a lot of loyalists. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, they have a fiduciary duty to the shareholders. And uh, the one thing I'm fairly certain of is that if they want to, and I hope they do, uh, the SEC vis-a-vis -vis the Department of Justice can take action now against Kotick. He clearly misled investors. I mean, he went to the trouble. They, they hired a law firm. This was all part of the old revelation uh, back in the summer that they hired a very respected law firm law firm that came in to audit this sexual harassment problem there at Activision uh, and pretty much gave him a clean bill of health. Uh, we now, you know, that obviously was passed on to the shareholders. Uh, we now know that uh, Kotick, who could have said, hey, well, I was told it was fine. And he knew it wasn't fine. That's what the article really points out. Uh, and that, that, that could mean that he was misleading shareholders. Uh, at that point, if the board feels like 
okay, there might be charges brought against them by the feds. That's going to just suddenly turn the share price of Activision into just a, 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 a top, and you're going to need to kind of stabilize the ship there. Uh, yeah, capitalism is going to be the sole deciding factor to remove him. I don't think he has the moral authority to run that company. Yeah, you know, either. But unfortunately, that's kind of the world that we live in. That's right. not enough in well, most so, cases. And so so to that question then of, you know, uh, are we surprised that the uh, Blizzard Activision situation exists today? Has the industry made progress from, you know, I, I do. I don't think it's massive progress. The fact that these situations came to light, the fact that these situations came to light and there was widespread intolerance that this could be allowed to go on mm -hmm. or that this was allowed to go on in the fashion that it did. I would see this hit Ubisoft as well. Uh, this, this, this has hit a lot of, a, a lot of companies. Uh, and it's not like suddenly the problem emerged in the last two years. This was endemic. Mm -hmm. and it's not even just endemic to games, but games uh, really do have a I've lot heard of this in gender. Yeah. Uh, and so they can be really, really ugly within the game. Industry. I've heard film and television also has issues. Oh, I've yes. heard uh, manufacturing yeah. has issues. I've heard uh, yeah, it's, it's warehousing. Re remember earlier in this show when I said I don't really have much care for human nature? Yeah. I mean, but the thing is, we're actually bringing it to light. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that's good. I think there will be progress. Uh, that's one of the reasons I'm really happy here at G4 uh, because I've seen it, I've seen it firsthand. Uh, that, you know, there's a, there, 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 I, I, I've never counted. There's a lot of women that work on X-Play. I think there's a lot of women that work on Attack of the Show. Mm -hmm. And it, that's going to prevent certain things from happening in the content of the show. And, and things, it, it's, it's like, it's, it, you go back, what was that? It was one of the Kardashians. I never knew what they sounded like. They were, it was on 24 hours a day at old G4. Yeah. Still don't know what they sound you like. You weren't keeping up with them? I mean, it was on the monitors everywhere. Right, but, but there was no volume control. Sure. So like, they could have sure. sounded like uh, James Earl Jones for all I know. <laughs> Just um, imagine Phil Anyway, so remember the one, one yeah. of the Kardashians did that ad for, I think, Pepsi? Yes, where they're, uh, they're quelling a riot. Was that yeah. Kendall? That was I, Kylie, Kylie? It was either Kylie or Kendall. It was, eh, I'm a Pepsi. Yeah. And, and the world's a better place. The riot right. is quelled. The and uprising's done. A lot of people are like, how on earth does that much money get spent? <laughs> <laughs> that was like a 90 second ad. This was yeah. not a small production by any stretch of the imagination. Yeah. I mean, this went through a lot of hands. But if all the hands look like the same person, and I know at the time, I think the head of the agency inside Pepsi actually was female and a person of color. I might be wrong on that. But still, it's like if, if the, most of the hands are the same, then there's not, you don't have that person in the room who goes, ah, or maybe you do have that person in the room, but if all the other hands are the same, they're like, eh, 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 yeah. we've, we've heard that before. Right. There's they, enough checks. Uh, yeah. the, it's the, the checks and balances, the, the, the gaze upon the product, yeah. which is being checked, the, all the eyes look the same, though. So yeah. it's really not a thorough check. So I, I, I think one of the things with, with, the, with what's, what's happening with Activision, what's happening within the industry writ large, what's, what's happening in a lot of American society, that it, it's one of those where... It's never going to change fast enough, and that's good. That's the only way to move things forward. But I also sometimes just want to worry. I don't want people to become too despondent where I'm going to say, no, nothing has changed. I, you, you see that a lot because there is such a sense of like, oh, my God, not again. And it's like right. you do. But I've, I've been in this industry long enough. Things have changed. They still have to keep changing. So Fair, fair point. Uh, let's do one more question before we take a break. Okay. Um, Vanessa, do we have another one here? We have uh, Kadosho says, Q for Adam. What titles are your picks for game of the year? Some games. Uh, I mean, look, there, there, there's some that look, I love Ratchet and Clank. I love Psychonauts 2. Yeah. I love Death Door. I love Forza Horizon 5. I love Deathloop. Uh, I really didn't like Metroid Dread, which I'm notorious <laughs> for. Me and David Jaffe, the original creator of the original God of War series. Yeah. I, he, are, he and I are absolutely simpatico on that. So the only thing I'm going to say that is not in contention on my list we do not plan to have a monolithic list. Sure. Uh, I, in fact, we could talk about that. I, I, I don't like monolithic outlets. Yeah, so what's the process for like X-Play's game of the year? Oh, I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, like we're only in November and we just launched. <laughs> like that sounds like a millennia off. Sure, so, okay. Um, but I can tell you, everybody working on X-Play has a list in their head. And mm -hmm. that's what I would like to tap into is like, let's learn about everybody and what they like rather than we need to get in the room and fight and come up with a big compromise. Right. Yeah. So, well, but okay. Before no. we do the break thing. Yeah. Metroid Dread. Yeah. It's, it's 
Look, it's not that good. It's not the worst game. This game did not come over to my house and shotgun my squirrel or something like that. It's just not good. <laughs> it, aesthetically, it doesn't look that good. It's like, um, and all these things that everyone keeps on defending, saying like, oh, but that's what Metroid is like. That's what Metroid is like. like I, I don't buy into that. Metroid is was the way it was back in like the like the eighties. Because, like, no one really understood game design for a home console yet. And so I'm going to forgive that. You know, they're like, well, that's what Metroid like. And like, as I like to say, just because you poop your pants on Tuesday and no one says anything doesn't mean it's a good idea to do it in the temple on Sabbath. It's like, it's, it's, it's like, it's the stupidest. It's, it's like, oh, no, but that's how things were. Okay, let's, like, drown women to find out if they're witches. It's like, no. It's like contemporary <laughs> game design should be designed so people, most people can, like, get something out of it. And here they're hiding stuff behind walls. You have to, and it's not even the backtracking. The map sucks. And everyone's, like, excusing it, like, oh, look, Grandma didn't say something racist to dinner. So, like, let's, let's applaud Metroid. <sighs> Oh, it's like the Dark Souls of fans. The controls are okay, though, right? Yeah, they're fine. That was the note I wanted to go to break on. We'll be back with more Adam Sessler after this. I mean, seriously. <laughs> <laughs> ah, going, going. We are back with gaming industry icon, X-Play icon. Zone, Adam yeah. Sessler. Yeah. Not like Carl Icon, but... Nope, nope. Yeah. Corporate Not, Raider More like the ones on the desktop. No, is, we yeah. click and drag. We uh, go to the recycle bin. We yanked you out. Oh, yeah, the, that's true. The desktop that is this, Yeah, this yeah, network. yeah. Instead of empty trash, it's it's now uh, like, nope, nope. We're, 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 we, we actually need that We knew better than to permanently scrub yeah. the hard drive of your bits, Adam. It's, it's a good idea. We knew better. Um, we, are, uh, we are neck deep now in a Q&A segment. Uh, time is yep. rapidly running out on this Whoa. program, but I'd love to get to some yeah, more of these questions sure, and sure. answers if we can. So let's get back to it. Chat, you had questions. We have answers. I think that's... Uh, a motto for an office supply company. I'm not quite sure, but hey, Adam, you are the... Oh, hey, Adam, asked Jordan. Oh, I, I, I love how you're the coolest the hey person. Well, we can't do I'm that so one. sorry. No, no, that's pretty good. We could skip past that one if he's the coolest person. No, uh, this is from not Adam Sessler. Hey, Adam, you are the coolest person to me. I don't have any big questions, but what or who got you into gaming and what games are you playing nowadays? Okay, we kind of touched on that. Oh, but there's a second half. Ooh. Also, any head care tips for someone who recently became bald? This is by uh, passing by the car. The what? The, I can't now. I cannot see it. It is. It might look big on your screen, but it's not. Passing by the passing screen. Passing by the SCR. SCR? The SCR. Sure. The old SCR. Something? Screen? The, the scene? The, the Sc screen? The scram. The scram. The scram. The scram. So what got me into gaming? Uh, this is kind of sad and pathetic. Uh, 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 a need for friends. Um, it's, it's, you know, was this like an arcade sort of thing? No, like there was a I, 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 I did like arcades. I like playing Ghosts and Goblins at the arcade. Uh, but it was also, it's like when the Nintendo came out, the, like the original NES, I really, really, really want it because I really liked Super Mario Brothers. Like, I just wanted to play that game. I think I never had this confirmed by my parents. Like, I really, like, where I went to school in Berkeley, California, it was a private school, and the majority of my friends were quite wealthy. I was not. Um, and I think that my parents always knew that I was kind of like painfully aware when I went to their houses for the weekend. I was like, this sure isn't like my house. Yeah. Um, I and keep that, banging my shins on cool toys. And that, Why you know, does that, this that, happen that, around that, my parts? The, the NES might give me kind of a leg up. I mean, I definitely have more friends coming over to my house in a short period of time. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, and, and so, you know, and I just love playing it. And also back then, once again, I wasn't getting games all the time. I was rarely getting, you couldn't rent games right. back then, like Blockbuster barely it didn't barely exist and they hadn't gotten into games and so like you just you enjoyed what you had uh i'm really glad it was super mario brothers and eventually this game called metroid yes i have played it internet <laughs> i played the metroid that Fine, doesn't I mean I, like just by playing it i have to like every version I of it i guess you're more of an xbox guy yeah that's fine it's like there's like it's like a, like a james bond fan was like just loved lazenby as much as connery uh so god metroid fans 
Anyway. But so as an entry point to socialization, yep. this is what, yep. uh, this was the milkshake that brought the boys to your yeah. proverbial yard. Yeah. And, and, uh, and then when I'm playing nowadays, we, we, we were just talking about yeah. all that. Now, bull tips. Yeah. Now this is a, uh, this is this a big is one. Important. My brother uh, ventured down the rabbit hole of, of head care at around the age of 26, 27 years old. Mm -hmm. And he's still struggles with a regimen to this day. I'm not quite sure how. Okay, so important things. Um, you probably wanna start wearing hats. I, I really recommend that. Mm -hmm. uh, at the very least, put sunscreen on your head. Yeah. Uh, it will burn, it hurts like hell. The hair was protecting you from that before. Put moisturizer on the top of your head, it will dry out. Uh, it's, and you can get pimples on your head as well. So you might want to just kind of bear that in mind. That can come from wearing a hat, actually. It, it's a horrible irony. The other thing is, as I did, wear a beard. Some people look <laughs> great with no, uh, with a shaved head and yeah. like, you know, not, nothing here. I, I look like I went through chemo. So and, you just take the woolly woolly yeah. and shake some of and, the metal shavings down to the bottom. this is the stuff that you can obsess about. Like, I like nice straight lines, mm. like in my beard. I enjoy getting it. It's a, that, that way you can still do, like, what is among the more masculine of activities outside of, like, race car driving, which yeah. is getting a nice shave with the straight razor. Yeah, it's manscaping. Everybody yeah, knows that. It's yeah. right there at the top of the list. Yeah. And... Now, when you create a character, when you're diving into Skyrim again, oh, ball, 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 ball! You do you so you don't escape oh, into dangly golden physics-based. Can I just tell you how I rate I was last year about Animal Crossing, and that a bald option was not there from the get-go. We we like to think representation in gaming yeah, is yeah is yeah. so far advanced, mm -hmm. but no bald option, no bald option. Now, is that was that in the summer update? Was that in the most recent? I, you know, I, I don't know. Like I like everyone and else you played know. it you quite obsessively for a month and a half, and then eventually I saw what other people were doing on social media. I'm like, oh, I'm never gonna pull that off. <laughs> yes. And so I just gave up. <laughs> I came across a tweet that was like, you can use these recess lights in your kitchen to add a splash. Just I was like, this is a game. Yeah, no, it's, it's just, yeah. I need to fix the lights in an actual kitchen. I don't have time for these yeah, virtual yeah. chores. Yeah, yeah. Someone else said, like, this feels like chores. I'm like, that's what it is. Yeah, welcome <laughs> to gaming. But somehow I can complete them here. Right, right. Well <laughs> seated. I it's didn't like, have to watch yeah. me pay off my debt. Not in real life, <laughs> but. As of an update, you can be bald in Animal Crossing, and they added another curly haired option as well. Wow. I mean, I guess that's the other thing. It's like, you know this from Nintendo. Re remember, like, with the Wii, they had the. Um, the, the motion board, whatever it was. Yeah, no, the for, Wii yeah, Fit yeah, board. Yeah, yeah, for Wii Fit. And like when they showed it off the first time, like they showed that like when you it measured your weight, it would actually change your-, your Yeah, your me would yeah, be your updated. Me. You couldn't escape. And everybody in North America was like, that ain't gonna work here. <laughs> um, but like it kind of, like there, there is that kind of thinking in Japan. Like, you know, my, once again, my, 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 my wife, you know, was born in Korea. Uh, she understands the East Asian culture of shame. Um, and it does not work as well here. So that's why I think the lack of bald characters in Animal Crossing did denote oh. something. It was a judgment. I think I am found lacking. The, I, I really do the, think so. the conspiracy hath been revealed. Yeah. Um, yeah. Let's do one more question. I'm, I'm asking the room. Great. Jordan says, hey, Adam, what's your favorite LA burger, uh, LA burger place? Is it pie and burger or apple pie? Oh, it's apple pan. Yes! Yeah. Okay. It's Apple Pan. Um, is it, is, now, I, I, didn't, I, I, I don't even know what this pie and burger is, but when you said it, I'm like, what kind of Apple Pan ripoff is this? <laughs> Apple Pan is one of the best burgers. Okay. Now, out part there. of my ignorance, I, I, I've, I've had many a burger, have not had the really? Apple Pan experience. So it's it's on just, Pico, right by Westwood. It's across from that mall that doesn't exist. I think it's a Google or it was going to be a Google office. Now, let's assume I can ask an AI to get me there. What will be the burger experience of okay. the Apple Pan so burger? That's the other thing, is that the Apple Pan experience, the building itself, I think it was constructed in the late 20s or 30s, and it looks really odd on the block that it's on. Mm -hmm. uh, the only seating is on a horseshoe counter. And the place is popular enough that people go in and they just kind of stand against the wall. And it's got this whole quality where you stand against the wall and you just know where you are in line. <laughs> You don't, you know, there's right. no one's waiting don't in line. Don't take a number. There's no, excuse me, it's you, and, no. You know, and then there's another custom where if you're by yourself, you kind of say, hey, I'm a single, if only one opens up. And then, it, like, you try to figure out somebody, like, someone will go, actually, I'm a single, too. I was Just, here before you. It's, it's in, no. like, a lot of guidebooks and tourist panic. If you're taking notes at home, we, Adam was asked what the best burger is. Mm -hmm. 
thus far we know uh, where the building is, what mm -hmm. the building look like looks like. We know what materials uh, the interior is made of. We know the seating arrangements. We know we the. You don't know which burger to get yet. We have no idea. There's if two they have the meat patties. Burger. There's and two if burgers. This has got to inform the way you review video games this as is, well. Yeah. There's the hickory burger, and Vanessa, what's the other one? Is it the just a burger? It's not. There's burger. a hickory and a barbecue or something. The hickory burger is the OG, which is yep. the one that has the hickory sauce, not yep. to be confused with ketchup. The steak mm -hmm. burger is the one that is more relish and pickle based. And That's also it. for COVID, they switched to outdoor seating. Ooh, okay. that ruins everything. But anyway. <laughs> it's like, yeah, because I can tell but so much of Apple Pan is they experience for have you. have mastered the art of proportionality in a burger. And, when, and they understand the importance of one key element that I think gets overlooked, which is iceberg lettuce. Ah, and it's like because like if you want to really upset me with burgers, <laughs> put on some dark greens. It's like because like it's not like burgers must have lettuce. Some sa no. sauteed spinach burgers or something. Burgers must have crunch to go with everything else. Right. And guess what? I love a dark green salad. I don't even mind kale. Not on my burger. You know, I need the crunch, and they just stack it thick with good, crunchy, some of the best iceberg lettuce this side of the Midwest. So as much as I know you love quantifying these reviews, uh, five out of five? Oh, yeah. It's like a six out of five. Okay. Well, I have a different scale when it comes to things other than games. The burger scale breaks mathematics. I don't know how that works, but when we come back, Adam will be rating and reviewing a bunch of other things, assigning Ooh. numbers important to that, like that. which he loves. Uh, the Metacritic will be unleashed when we come back. More with Adam Sessler. Hey there, everybody. It's a tag of the show presents the loop. I'm Kevin Pereira. My guest today is Adam Sessler. And thanks to him, I've got the Apple Pan website open on. My, yeah, because it's laptop. good. I get it now. So, OK, so with the review thing, mm -hmm. uh, so many uh, you know, game companies maybe didn't do themselves a favor by putting the number on the box. Maybe they didn't have a choice. Um, you know, a number seems like, well, I don't know if your scale's out of five or out of 10. We're, so we're, we're, we're out of five. Right. No, I'm, I'm in general. Like, oh, I don't know. Because because sites shift and they change, right? So you're yeah. out of five and other sites out of 10. Yeah. You give a game a five, that could be very damning on like a Metacritic or an aggregator. Oh, God. Unless they're weighing something You said properly. Metacritic. I know, I know. Well, oh, so, yeah. So that's why I bring it up. Because yeah. a lot of people rely on the Rotten Tomatoes of the gaming world. Oh, my God. Which is crazy because like it's 50%. Oh, yeah, right. And I just so, we're fresh. Also, it's so it's like we're fresh. It's like what? <laughs> oh yeah, and I just uh, Metacritic. The guy who used to run Metacritic, he and I like we we. It was we did not see eye to eye. He tried to tell me what our scores meant one time. I didn't want to be a Metacritic. Uh, because you didn't it's want like, X play numbers no, ending up on Metacritic. Because I know how that site. I don't think it's used as much anymore. That site was used for bonuses for people who make games. Right. And it's like I'm just a critic. It's like, and also I think it's even suspect how much reviews affect the sales of most games. I think they can affect the sales of some single player games that are out there mm -hmm. because that's sometimes the diciest purchase because you know the replayability is low. Not that I give a crap about replayability, but I know consumers do. Um, yeah, uh, and it's also, I just don't like the scores. The scores are there just because it's like, hey, it's a good way to end a video. It's like, we, we've been doing them without scores and there just is that like, is the video over? It right. just doesn't have that, 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 Tonal close right. to it. And also, yeah, it's until like, I get the hit the subscribe and drop an elbow on the bell. And the so, video so doesn't many feel over. people, they're like, what would you give it? I'm like, I don't know. I liked it. And it's like, you know, I never have come up with the score. Like I'm playing it. I'm like, well, this is a two. Hmm. I'm actually thinking, well, I don't like it because of this, this and this. And I start to formulate it. And I'm like, well, given how I feel about the game, the shorthand for those feelings tends to be this. But I do not start with the score. I never want to start with the score. Um, I just more or less just like, yeah, I guess if someone really is like driving past me, and I can say one thing to them about a game. <laughs> I can go three. <laughs> <laughs> and that's it. Right. Uh, yeah, th that's, I mean, that, and then that's so tough too, because like what makes, uh, a, 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 I know you offer like a, a, a score for the, the holistic experience that is the game, yeah. but if you're like, let's just breaking down the graphics of something like a, an, an indie game that relies on, uh, you know, a black and white color palette of pixel yeah. art. Yeah. Versus... Oh, there's actually a phenomenal game that's out there right now called Unsighted. 
Uh, and it's it's doing kind of like a six, it's somewhere between eight and sixteen bit, like you know the really blocky graphics. Yeah. Uh, this is like a Metroidvania. Very very interesting how they're putting the whole thing together. But yeah, graphically, uh, I mean I, I'm I'm not a huge fan of the sixteen bit graphics because I don't understand why you would ever do that by choice. Uh, <laughs> because I had to live with it more. I I have a I struggle with like kind of the depth perception challenges that 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 it presents. But right. regardless, it's oh, like, it's stunning though for. I'm yeah. looking at unsighted imagery yeah, but here. It's, yeah. it's one of those games. Like this game is great, like really, really, really good. But no one's gonna like go crazy about the graphics. I mean, same with Tetris, one of the best games in the world. Uh, and it's like you would never say it's good on graphics, good on audio, right. good on controls, or anything like that. It's just genius. On the spinach green battery draining screen of my Game Boy, oh yeah, it was fine. But I will say, uh, in VR and even on, on OLED, the Tetris effect. Oh, Tetris in effect 4K is like, oh, it's so good. Is a great argument for graphics Miyazaki, in gaming. Not, not Miyazaki. Who's our buddy? Who, uh, Mizuguchi. Mizuguchi. Yeah, um, Q Entertainment. Amazing, just, amazing I mean, creator. The minute I heard this was his, I was like, well, duh. Yeah. Hold on. I never thought of this before. And it's just genius. Yeah. So. I, I played the demo on a PS4 when it first came out and immediately ran to Best Buy and yeah. grabbed a VR headset. And I already had VR headsets, but I'm like this. I feel like this was made for that experience. And so I fumbled with hooking that up in the living room, sat on a pillow cushion because the cords weren't long enough, put it on and started to cry. It's so good. At the very you know first why? level, when dolphins are swimming up above because I got a Tetris and the such... music is swelling. I think it's also that works so well as VR because it's such a simple game. Right. Numbers are returning to X play. That was a oh, discussion that was they've had. They've returned. Yeah. yeah you know, it's it's kind of like herpes. They can't go away. <laughs> the gift that keeps on giving these yeah. numbers of yours. Yeah. And ever so often they flare up because someone disagreed with it. And it's so, like, oh. All right. So so then the Metacritics of the world, and I'm sorry to keep saying that name. No, yeah, it's okay. But, mm -hmm. but but it was yeah, no, because I could see it's it's trigger warning for Adam specifically. Um you know, you mentioned something that, that I, when I found out it was, it was so depressing to me was to hear that livelihoods could yep. be predicated yep. in the aggregate yep. numbers that were handed yep. out, which look, I get like, Hey, you're going to get a bonus. If your game performs well, you're going to get, yep. get a bonus. If your game sells well, in theory, that sounds like, okay, that could be a good money motivator, a, a, a perfectly uh, innocuous carrot to dangle at the end of a stick. But when the, the literal numbers that people are assigning your work for whatever reason get aggregated onto this one specific site. And whatever that site says determines mm -hmm. if uh, kids are going to private and school or not. And it's also, I'm not absolutely up to date on how salaries and everything works within the game industry, but a lot, like that bonus, those kind of bonuses are kind of essential. Yes, in, in, like, it's it's not what a bonus is, is supposed to be, which is you get an extra scoop of ice cream or some more, you know, whipped cream or something like that. No, th like this is like dinner, right? Um, and like that's I I, I, I I did a rant about a GDC once, and I was like, you know, if you really if the press knows among itself that we probably couldn't even pitch a tent together. Like much less like come up with a, 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 a common consensus on these things. And we're not supposed to have a consensus. I mean, it's just the whole thing made me sick to my stomach. It, it, it still does. But as I said, I don't know if this is practiced anymore. Metacritic as a site does not. I don't hear it mentioned anymore. Right. But I do know even as early as 2012, there was a certain publisher who actually threatened to withhold review copies of games unless we changed our, no, no one remembers this, but in 2012, we changed our review scale. We had 0.5s. Oh, that's right. Yeah, and that was because a certain publisher, I'm not gonna say which one, the person at this publisher no longer works in games anymore. So uh, I don't want anyone to think that this practice has continued, mm. but they would withhold review copies of games unless we changed to something that was closer to a 10 point scale because it was more amenable to Metacritic. Is that because a, a five out of five, a perfect score for an X play right. was but seen a as four is an eighty, which is considered the low end of good. Right. Because and that's the other thing. It's why we don't do the ten point scale. Is that people think that like I think it's because everyone's so young and they're like either are still in school or they're fresh out of school and you're in school like seventy is bad. Like you're in trouble at seventy. <laughs> right. And so if you're doing a ten point scale, like especially is that that means seven to one are just declamations of crappy. Right. And I'm just like, I'm not going to make yeah, that the joke the is distinction Did, did the game boot? Okay, you're a five. Yeah. And let's go it's, from it's there. Exactly. And it's just, it's, 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 it's pointless. All right. Well, Adam, you've been very gracious with your time. We've talked a lot about gamings and how we review games and how we perceive them. But now it's time for 
a little game. Oh, oh, I like games. You're going to like this Is one. it hoop and stick? It's very close to that. Oh, It's yeah. very close to that. Maybe on the other side of a graphic? Yep, there it is. That's a menacing graphic, I just want to let you know. Like, we're going to play a little game. <laughs> but didn't the... Uh, the jazz and the big cartoony star, didn't that diffuse it a little oh, bit? Oh, that think, just that just underscores the sense of You think menace. this could still be Squid Games? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, pay no attention to the laser dot that's <laughs> tracing your chest. Okay, good. Don't worry about that. This is uh, far simpler on the heels of you exclaiming your love oh. for ra rating systems. Oh, oh awesome, awesome. Uh, this game is called Out of Five, Ooh. Adam, and you get to rate an assortment of fun things out cool. of five, and we're going to go through it, I guess, as fast as we can. We doing a timer on the screen, Vanessa. What are we doing? Yeah, for you this? need me to do it. The, We're gonna the, go as fast as we can until we gotta get a break. Yeah, oh, okay. Do you, do you want me to do the you know the whole out of five? Well, of course actually, we want that. Yeah, I think that would be good. And I think we need. Yeah, to. Yeah, and as as much as that might slow the pace down, yeah. it's that is that is where we're going with this one. So okay. Uh, out of five, Adam, we're going to start with Twitter accounts with anime avatars. Oh, one okay. out of five. We got to stop the game. Actually, now. no, we got to go negative on that. I got negative three out of five. We all know who those people are. <laughs> what? Anime fans? Uh, employees at Crunchyroll? No, no, it's like, it's, 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 there was that thing, Bamer Bait. I'm not going to say what the oh, real word is. And oh, they all had, they all oh, had anime. anybody, okay, it, it, who, oh, it's more reliable that there's a jackass on the other side of the account than even like, you know, kind of the, the, the default egg accounts. Well, oh, yeah. Okay. I sometimes I just block them proactively. Audible, it's not on the list. What about someone that has an NFT as their avatar? I'm, we'll, we'll just upset the world. It's like, I, I'm, I, don't, I don't know how you know. To Ethereum out yeah. of five. How about pickled fish? Oh, that's like a five out of five. Pickled fish? Oh, yeah, I love it. I'm a Jew. <laughs> from like, cent my family's from Central Europe. If it doesn't taste miserable, how do you know you're eating? Like, like dark rye. I mean, who, like, who comes up with that? I Adam's. love that pickled herring and dark rye. Oh, yeah. No. Yeah, pickled no. herring. Someone stepping on the back of your shoe. Two <laughs> out of five. Wait, so it's let, that's someone, someone uh, uh, giving you the heel. Someone, mm -hmm. someone stomping on the back of your foot. That's, that's, that's not as bad as having anime as an avatar. We all make mistakes. Having an anime avatar is never like, oops, I did it again. You went no, out of your way no, for that no, one. No. Okay. It's like, oops, I'm a Nazi. It's the same. It's like, uh, you can trip and fall into fascism. Yes. How about wrestling? Like, wait, as an activity? Wait, wait. Oh, oh as, as, as something I'm as rating? rating it out of five, yeah. Oh, we're talking about all wrestling, the type Xavier does, uh, the let's Olympic Greco-Roman. No, let's go with that type. Let's go with uh, superstars, combat sports, it's wrestling. A, it's, a, it's a four out of five. For the storylines? Um, I don't know a ton about it. I've gotten to learn so much because of Xavier. Because of Xavier um, yeah. And I actually really want to go to one now and just kind of see it. Okay. You want to know how I really, really know wrestling? This, I'm going to sound like the biggest snob in the world. Uh, the great cultural critic, French, Roland Barthes, uh, one of his famous collection of essays called Mythologies, he wrote this famous essay about professional wrestling. And this is back in the 60s. So it was a different type of wrestling. Uh, it's absolutely a fascinating read. Uh, and and that, that was kind of how I first started to truly appreciate wrestling. It was the French. And the the French got you into wrestling. What yeah. was the, the the description or the dissection of wrestling that that? It was kind of the way that the the, the role of the character and the kind of how mm -hmm. it interacts with the crowd. I mean, like it, it, he's 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 correct. It, it, it's not. It definitely is not like thumbing its nose at, 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 at wrestling, but it's taking kind of a French philosopher's point of view of professional wrestling. Okay, watching the sunrise. I'm trying to think of the last time I did that. Uh, but I'll, uh, that's definitely a five out of five. Well, it depends on what I did the a night five out before. Of, no, I was going to say, and a five out of five Because sometimes seeing the sunrise, you're like, oh, uh, I have not had that feeling for a long time. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, it comes with, where are my pants? Right. Um, <laughs> but it can be really pretty. Now I just wake up early because I'm older and I get scared. That's like, fair. you wake up, you think about the world, you get up, I better go see the sunrise. In that case, it's a five. What about watching the sunset? Five. Four out of five. Not as good as that old sunrise. <sighs> Even the way I live in the West Coast, yeah. and now see like the sunsets are there. Beautiful. Uh, because you know what they say? It's like it's the crap in the air that kind of gives it all those beautiful hues. It's yeah, yeah. it's grim. Yeah. Uh, uh, how do you feel about the coming resource wars? Um, 
This doesn't have to be out of five. I'm just curious. How do I feel about the coming resource wars? I've been cl- I've been saying this was going to happen for 30 years. I was one of those guys in college uh, where yeah. I'm well, like, it's, it, there was a whole theory called the North South theory uh, that that does date that far back. Where like people who were paying attention to what was happening environmentally uh, knew that like it was then going to become like most conflict was going to come out of like resources and not sort of ethnic or religious conflict and things like that, that we almost kind of come up with ethnic or religious com, um, conflict because we just want to have conflict. Right. And like, and that's a much, I can grab onto that. Yeah. That I can harness yeah. and shout at a neighbor. The other stuff is way when, when, when too it's like, much we for need me to water grab. and you have it. Yeah. That's what like, that's that. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's grim. Well, there are other things we need in this world, like a commercial break. Adam, Whoa, when we come back, that's we're gonna, a resource. We're going to round out this game <laughs> more with Adam Sussler when the loop continues. Hello there, folks. We are back with The Reason I Breathe. The only reason to get out of bed in the morning, Adam Sessler. What? Yeah. Oh, that's man. That's where I've arrived. It's immense appreciation wow. and also, I think, clinical depression. But that's okay. Okay, yeah. We were, uh, <laughs> last we caught, uh, we were uh, talking about the coming resource wars. Yes, the coming resource but wars. But that was in the midst of rating some fun stuff. So yeah, maybe we exactly. can get back to assigning numerical values okay, let's to experiences in this world. Uh, this is Out of Five with Adam Sessler, and we're going to go with Petty Gossip. Hmm. That's a four out of five. Do you Have you been known to gab? Oh, well, I, I actually prefer to listen. Well, look, A, uh, I'm not really a journalist, but I run in a circle of other people that do reporting and stuff. We all hear things. Sure. So, yeah, there's that petty gossip. I work in the entertainment industry as yeah. well. Uh, I like, really, petty gossip is so much better than actual gossip because that's like Les Moonves. Right. And yeah. that's grim and scary. Yeah, actual gossip can have yeah. deep ramifications. Yeah. The petty stuff is the... that's. Well, it's like sometimes it's just like, oh my God, horrible things are happening. Where petty gossip is like, did you see those shoes? <laughs> did you hear why they had those shoes? Right. So, yeah. uh, You said you're not a journalist. No. You don't, you don't fancy yourself one? No, not in the least. Now, why, now why is that? Is, um, I... Uh, I worked with people like Patrick Klepek and knowing people like Jason Schreier and mm-hmm. stuff like that. I know what a real journalist does. I don't do that. And I know a lot of people say games journalists. And I think it's because we haven't come up with another word. I think I'm a lot closer. Obviously, I'm a reviewer and I'm kind of like a Maureen Dowd, like, mm-hmm. you know, a columnist for the Times or the Post or something like that. Because I'm always going to be opinionated ever so often because I am well connected. I might come up with a story, right. but it was not so much that like, you I'm out there looking down. for a scoop. Right, you're not. There's, there's there's real people that do that very well. I absolutely hate stealing their thunder with the with with that title. Out of five, Adam wearing pants at home. Two out of five. Yeah. Two. Yeah. Out of five. Has it been tough to adjust to a post pandemic pants wearing? Well, also, it's like I think like many other people, I discovered really nice sweatpants. Yeah. Like Brooklyn, I don't think I'm allowed to even mention their name, but yeah, I'm, I'm just not going to say that word. You can bleep it. Um, we, should, we should get them as a sponsor. Uh, no. Like really soft, high end sweatpants are awesome. I'm with you. I've been going with athleisure. Uh, I, I've been putting on like actual pants and, yeah. and decent shirts ish. Oh, do you know I how many jeans I bought but... in the week leading up to launch? Yeah. I was like, I, I guess I need more because I'm probably going to put mustard on these and yeah. I can't wear that on camera. Yeah, I've got about a month before I revert back to my uh, my, my Croc sandals and my hiking pants. And good, that's about it. A good morning game wearing nice sweatpants. Mm. Oh, it's good. It's okay. Good. Now, what about pot? What, 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 what kind of smoke? It says kind? pot, and this could be for a succulent, but I think this is uh, the, the devil's lettuce. Jazz cabbage? This is indeed the devil. So this is a tough one. For me personally, it's a two out of five. Mm -hmm. Um, I do do not react to it well. Uh, Anxiety and panic attacks? Yeah, Yeah. primarily that. As I like to say, I suddenly decide to go over all the bad decisions I've made in life. (laughs) Sure. And it's horrible. Um, I, there's so many other people out there. They're like, oh, you should try this. You should try this. Yeah. I so don't want to ever go through that sensation right. again. No, I man, just it's don't. the wrong strain. And God, plus, you got to burn it with a nail. I do not no. fault anybody who does it. Although, 
people get in you would get in trouble for drinking on the job mm -hmm. and it's like there's so many people i see they're stoned on the job there's probably some jobs that if you're working in an amazon warehouse i bet that's a far better way to pass the time sure. if you're interfacing with the public and you have that glazed i don't care what you say yeah, look yeah. It's, it really can be like it's like you know like i have like half of the erewhon like health food stores here in la <laughs> it's either they're stoned or they're anemic and i can't figure out which but you get the same kind of lacking service all right, we're going to rapid fire these, so no okay, need rapid for fire. the pregnant pause. I'll just give you the number. Uh, smoking. Uh, one out of Garfield. five. Garfield. Uh, one out of five. Clowns. Uh, four out of five. What? Yeah. I mean, I, my wife is terrified of them. I think Killer Clowns from Outer Space is a fine movie. That's a great movie. Yeah. yeah Tom Candy so, Cocoons. And, yeah. yeah, okay. Uh, licorice. Uh, three out of five. The Moon Landing. Uh, five out of five. Well it done. happened. Well, allegedly. It happened. Allegedly. It happened. Okay. Well done, steak. Oh, one out of five. And uh, Zack Snyder. One. Is there like that? He is the anime, the anime avatar, avatar of visionary <laughs> directors. Yeah. Oh, okay. How do you mess up zombies in Vegas? That intro sequence was the movie that I wanted. Yeah, which clearly was made for the trailer. Right? I yeah, mean, it's like, oh, but re re remember that PS3 video game Lair? No. The I Dragon don't. Combat game? I don't remember that. Like, I'm it gonna sucked look it up. because it's like, it was Factor 5 who did those incredible Star Wars um, fighting uh, games on, 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 on the GameCube. Uh, and this was like motion control on the PS3. Oh, yes, yes, yeah. yes, 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 yes. And it's like, somehow that game got messed up. Yeah, and like I always think of Zack Snyder <laughs> with that. It's like, how did you get zombie? I mean, it's like you almost have to applaud someone. It's like that is creative navigation to screw that up. Uh, last but certainly not least, uh -huh. pineapple pizza. Oh, one out of five. Okay, that's it. That's it. I can't. I can't. There's. It's. Well, that's why you're on the other end of stage A. It's like we can't get near each other. It's like two yeah. Ron Silvers touching each <laughs> other in Robocop. <laughs> we're, we're never going to fight each other at the crafty table. I guarantee no, you uh, that. Yeah, yeah, well, that's good. Um, it is, uh, we are at, at precious moments Whoa. left, dear Adam. As such, it's time to grab the saddle and ride the promo pony on out of here. Ooh. You'll see. There he is. There he is. Oh, there I didn't know. I didn't know that that was how I was going to make its appearance, but just wow. that was terrible, Vanessa. That looked, I got to be honest, that, 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 that looked more like a no, horse than a pony. No, 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 no. <laughs> terrible, like, you, you'll, you'll, we'll learn my, my vernacular. Terrible is amazing. Oh, no, uh, I, I hate it, too. Run I, it again. Like, dumb is amazing. Run it again. Uh, okay. Give uh, me that pony. But Come really, on. that's a horse. Let's take a look. Uh, that looks like the, a full the size. The scale is tough horse. here. That's a very, if you think about how much real estate there is, the horse could take the whole thing. We'll get to that later. You can rate okay. our promo pony later. All but right. Adam, let's ride the promo pony. Yes. How can people get more of you and see you and just inject you directly into their eye holes and veins? YouTube.com slash xplay. There's so many videos. There's new ones going up every weekday. Also, Tuesdays and Fridays, we will be doing the live stream here from this very stage, but on the other end of it, where we right. don't like pineapples on pizza. That's fine. Uh, and uh, the, obviously, that we're available uh, as, as, as a regular show on the G4 Cable Channel. Uh, and then if you need to yell at me, go to my Twitter account, at Adam Sessler. Love it. Adam, thank you for being so oh, gracious. Oh, no, this is fun. With your time. I know this is, a this is again, pre-tape. It's been a crazy week. Yes. But, um, but it's always a delight to and have you. And it's not in over life. yet. Not, not by a long sight. They say I see my family at the end. <laughs> Friends, uh, Adam might see his family, but you can see some amazing merch and delightful deals if you go to shop.g4tv.com. Use the promo code RADDY20 if you want to save 20% off your order before it expires. I, I want to thank you for tuning in to Attack of the Show, The Loop, not because it says it on this card, which, spoiler, it does say that. Uh, also, I love my family. No, I, I want to say we're taking a break for Thanksgiving Day, and we'll be back on Friday with a pre-taped episode of Invitation to Party. That's our D&D &D show. I predict chuckles and laughs. Maybe some dice rolls as well. Who knows? Also, check out g4tv.com slash schedule for more details on when and where you can check me out, check out Adam Sessler, get our D&D show. We got an eSports show called Boosted. There's so much There's a content. Lot. We're teeming with it. Our seams are bursting, and you can rate it yourself. So far, I'd give this show a one. Out of five. Thanks, Adam. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you all for watching. Goodbye.